YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. Today we have the fourth installment of our Simpsons series. Voice Breakdown. Last episode, we broke down Patty and Selma's voices. For this episode, we'll be focusing on Marge Simpson. Ow, oh, homie. We said that Patty and Selma's voice was a two for one. If you learn that one voice, you really have two characters. But really, it was almost a three for one. That's because Marge has some striking similarities to Patty and Selma. This is because she is their sister, and because all three of them were voiced by the same voice actor, Julie Kavner. There are some differences with Marge's voice for sure, but if you can do Patty and Selma, this one should be no problem for you. Let's break this voice down. Component number one, the vocal cords. Just like Patty and Selma's voice, this component is the most important to get right. The gravelly voice that Marge has is accomplished by a few things. First, we need to activate the false vocal cords. You can feel these by trying to gently clear your throat. <clears throat> Marge will also have some vocal fry as well. So far, this is just like her sisters Patty and Selma. The distinction lies in the pitch of the voice. Patty and Selma have very low pitched voices, oftentimes not even using the true vocal cords at all. But for Marge, we want to combine that false vocal cord use with the high pitched true vocal cords. Her pitch will often go very high when she is angry or being intense. When she is calmer, however, the voice is still high, just not as high. This will be in more of a head voice for ladies and falsetto for guys. One of the things most unique about Marge is the lack of consistency to her voice. You will hear it fall in and out of true voice, vocal fry, false vocal cords, cracking, and so on. Feel free to let her voice waver and don't worry about keeping an exact quality throughout. The more varied the distortion to her voice, the more authentic it sounds. I don't talk like that. Component number two, the larynx. The larynx is not a crucial component for Marge's voice. That being said, when doing any higher pitched voice, it is likely that we naturally raise our larynx. We don't need to raise the larynx to raise our pitch, but the higher we go, the greater the challenge this becomes to keep the larynx neutral. For this voice, just let the larynx naturally move. If you find the voice is way too bright, lower the larynx, and if it's too dark, Raise it, but likely allowing it to move naturally will be just fine. Most Tavern? That's your fun place, like me in the lamp store. Component number three, the tongue. Similar to Patty and Selma, we want a very slight raise to the back of the tongue. This aids in the brightness of the voice. With a voice as shrill as Marge's, a little bit of added brightness is helpful. If you do an E sound, you will feel a sensation of the back of your tongue being raised. Imagine this a bit while speaking as Marge, and you'll get just a bit of brightness added. Homer! Bart! Component number four, the soft palate. This is an important component. We definitely want nasal resonance for Marge. This is accomplished by lowering the soft palate. Imagine the sound going into the nasal cavity and feel those vibrations in the nose. I told you 20 times, you never listen. Component number five, articulation. As we said for Patty and Selma, the residents of Springfield do not share a common dialect. For Marge, one common quality throughout her speech sounds is nasality. We want to really nasalize her sounds. There are also occasions, like her sisters, where the consonants can be a bit stronger and punchy. Homer. I've always stood up for you. People point out your flaws and I always say, well, sometimes you have to stand back to appreciate a work of art. Component number six, prosody. Marge loves her family and sees the best in everyone, even Homer. As such, her inflection is often upbeat, caring, and loving. She does have another side to her, which is her trying to put up with the antics of her family. 
During these moments, she can come across as a bit down and even sad or defeated. She also has moments when she is angry or defending her family, when she can become very animated. In these moments, we want to raise the pitch even higher and give more distortion to the voice. But apart from these moments, she tends to be a fairly calm character. Lisa! Maggie! Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. We want to use a high-pitched voice with uneven distortion caused by the false vocal cords and vocal fry. Component number two, the larynx. We can allow the larynx to naturally move. Component number three, the tongue. Have just a slight raise to the back of the tongue. Component number four, the soft palate. Drop the soft palate to allow a great degree of nasality. Component number five, articulation. We want nasalized sounds as well as punchier consonants. Component number six, prosody. Have inflections that are typically caring and loving with occasional moments of outbursts of anger as well as some more subdued inflections when she feels sad or defeated. Thank you for watching New York Speech Coaching's Voice Breakdown, episode 45. Be sure to check out future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. See you next time.